Many wild things have happened at the Gallagher household, but F paying it forward manages a first, turning it into a strip club. Instead of siblings and deadbeat dads, Lip finds himself surrounded by women. Psych, Lip wakes up erect with Liam at the edge of his bed playing with action figures. Another stiffy asks his brother. TMI, Liam. TMI, elsewhere in the house, Debbie is back and unloads a feisty rant on Fiona about why she's allowed to stay there. It's all cool with Fiona, especially since she needs Debbie's help getting her druggy resident's head unstuck from a fence at her building. But before the sisters and Franny can leave, Fiona looks like she's seen a ghost. It turns out Debbie isnt the only person returning. Liam has let Sean in. Yes, Fiona's drug addict ex-fiancé played by Dylan McDermott Dermot Mulroney is back. She ignores him, and Debbie scolds Liam for answering the door for douchebags. You don't need him, Fiona, assures Debbie. You're a strong, independent woman just like me. Someone has been breaking into houses in the area, so a neighborhood watch has formed. Carl Isnt a fan of a club of George Zimmerman type of P.I.E.s who are entrained for military action. The military man is determined to find the perpetrator, especially since a veteran was among those robbed. Liam shares the news of Sean's return with the rest of the Gallagher men. Frank, who exposed Sean's relapse on Fiona's wedding day, has decided to forgive him. This is a test of our family's spiritual growth, declares the patriarch, who says he's now entered his symbolic thirties. They sure do grow up so fast. Now with a job, cell phone, and bank account, Frank has decided the next item on his to-do list is to become a good father to his bonus round, a.k.a. Liam. The reformed man wants to know what he can to do to be a better dad, leading Liam to mention how other kids have trust funds. I'm afraid I smoked up that one already, Frank replies. As he drops Liam off, Frank plays Prince Charming as a mom's heel breaks. He fixes it and slips it back on her foot. She seems very intrigued by him. Kevin from Chicago, born Bart from Kentucky, has made the journey down to his homeland with V and the kids. It's like one of those movies where the black folks first cracks feet there greeted by Kev's aunt Ronnie, who upon meeting V says, you're just like your brothers, love the dark meat. Once inside, Kev gets the rundown on his family, mother ran off and dad D. Ronnie says they didn't mean to leave him at that gas station they got confused and didn't realize until it was too late. V has her reservations about her new family, which she shares with Fiona. They're nice and they're racist, it's f -ing confusing, proclaims V over the phone to her friend, saying she might have to go Django on their ass. I'd watch that remake. Meanwhile, up in Chicago, Fiona has her own man problems. Not only did she forget to meet Ba here and give him his keys, but on her way there, Sean appears again, wanting to talk over dinner. Lip comes outside to play the intimidating brother role, even though if anyone needs protection, it's probably Sean. After letting Ba here into his new apartment, Fiona catches Nessa up on the Sean drama over wine coolers. Confessing she went dead inside, Fiona says she still has feelings for her ex. Nessa suggests she tell Sean she's going, only to then stand him up. Classic Vanessa Abrams move. Originally intending to heed Nessa's advice, Fiona ends up meeting Sean at the restaurant. You deserved better, he tells her, to which she responds, you're effing right I did. He's sorry, one year sober, and wants to pay her back for the wedding. You destroyed me, she says. I loved you, a whole. F, I probably still do. Yikes, this is awkward, because he doesn't want her back. He actually got married and just wants to make amends. Am I a effing step in your rehab, she screams, throwing the money at him and storming out. Bread and Lip's meal at the diner is going slightly better. The conversation today is centered on how Lip can't even get laid in my dreams. Brad suggests a no-strings relationship, which is a solid suggestion, since Lip already has his eye on one of the waitresses. While she would love to jump his bones, she says she can't do that to Sierra doesn't he know the diner code is waitresses or dishwashers. This leads to Lip trying his luck on Tinder. After matching with a girl, he goes to meet her at a bar, where he is immediately uneasy. She's drunk, and when they kiss he can taste the alcohol on her lips. He smartly leaves, recap continues on page 2.